Oh, come on. Does everything have to be a taffy pull right now? Hi, I'm a fluffy bunny. I'm Lorraine. I'm perfectly illustrated. I'm Langston. And this is Earth's Mightiest Show. Where we talk about all of the biggest stuff in the Marvel Universe. So let's get into all the stuff that we are a Twitter about. Oh, this is so cool. I have it on my desk right now. You gotta check out The Road to Avengers Endgame, The Art of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is a new hardcover book. Fans can discover the inside story of Marvel Studios' Avengers Infinity War with behind the scenes photos, concept art, and interviews with the cast and crew. They tell the story that did not appear on the screen, but colored last year's shocking chapter of the MCU's epic interconnected journey. You guys should check it out wherever books are sold because this book is honestly really cool. MUA fans are getting a new amazing look at Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order this week in Game Informer magazine. It's this month's cover story for Game Informer, and wow, look at everyone on that cover, including those sweet, sweet X-Men. I love them so much. Uh, the hotly anticipated game for the Nintendo Switch features tons of your favorite Marvel heroes and villains, and you can get a deep dive on what to expect when you snag your copy. I cannot wait to make some amazing team-ups and smash my way through all those baddies and badniks, and you can get the game exclusively for the Nintendo Switch on July 19th. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. returns with its season six premiere tomorrow night, May 10th at 8, 7 central on ABC. A lot to go through because it's a lot has happened over yeah. the course of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, all right, let's, uh, settings have changed. The roster has changed, of course. Yeah. Pe species have changed. People aren't what they used to be. Yeah. As in like beings. Yeah, Daisy Johnson used to be a human. Now mm -hmm. she's an inhuman. She's in though. That's good. Oh boy. Uh, also, the agents have taken on a ton of villains mm -hmm. in their five seasons prior. So Hydra, Hive, remember that? Mm -hmm. Evil Robots, Ghost Rider was there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and strangely, a lot of people have lost their hands. That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, you know what, to be fair, you get it. The replacement can only be better. Robot. That is true. There have Ro been some pretty cool hands. Yeah, right? Uh, yeah. Got to hand it to them. And last season, the agents took on the future and space and the Kree. Oh, big boy. season. A lot of big season. A big, big show. But hey, listen, don't fret if you are lost in space, so to speak. Uh, I've got you covered with an ASAP recap of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5. Oh, well, there it goes. Holy boy. This is your ASAP recap of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5. You ready? On your mark, get set, go! New season, new setting for Coulson and the crew. They wake up to find themselves displaced in time and space. But, oh no, Fitz was left behind. A rogue grifter named Deke appears and helps them navigate the Kree space station called the Lighthouse. At the Lighthouse, humans are slaves and the Inhumans are used as gladiators. What's worse, it looks like sometime between our agents present and this future, the world was quaked apart by the Destroyer of Worlds. Daisy, that's on you. Simmons gets captured by the Kree leader Cassius and is enlisted to help Inhumans hone their powers, but while trying to save her, Daisy is captured. Thanks a lot, Deke. Things go from bad to worse when they learn Cassius plans to use his profits from selling Inhumans to start a new life and leave the lighthouse to burn. Destroy the station. Along with everyone on it. Meanwhile, back in the present, Fitz is taken in by General Hale, who saw the future via a young Inhuman named Robin. Fitz escapes and works with the Chronicom Enoch to put himself in stasis, and after 74 years, he awakens in the future, where he reunites with the Agents. After Daisy is forced into an Inhuman gladiator fight, she and her teammates escape, and Simmons proposes to Fitz. Marry me, Fitz. Absolutely. How sweet and dangerous. <laughs> Meanwhile, May's fighting gets her a death sentence, AKA being sent to Earth's surface. She's rescued by a group of people who have managed to survive and turn the Zephyr into a shelter. Yo-Yo and Max stay behind to help a new inhuman named Flint liberate the lighthouse while the rest of the team goes to reunite with May, who's aboard the Zephyr and finds an old piece of the monolith that transported them to the future. But bad times for Yo-Yo when she meets her future self and sees a horrifyingly bleak future. The agents finally all meet up with May and Robin, the future seeing little girl from the past who is now an old woman. Robin aids the agents with her visions of the future and past as she reveals that May took care of her as a little girl and that Fitz must build a time machine to save them. The older Robin is killed but with her dying breath also sees that the young inhuman Flint can rebuild the monolith and transport them home. We can save everyone. Just one question though, who's Flint? The agents return to the lighthouse, save the remaining prisoners, and the agents kill Cassius and his baddies, and Flint rebuilds the monolith to return the agents to their own time. 
Upon arrival, the team discovers Deke also made it to Earth. In an attempt to keep a low profile, they go to collect him, but are intercepted by Hydra's own General Hale, her soldiers, and her most formidable warrior, her daughter Ruby, who wields extremely deadly ring blades. And in the scuffle, Yo-Yo's arms are cut off by Ruby's blades. Yo-Yo, hey Ruby, not cool. The agents have bigger problems, if you can believe that, because all of this time travel has caused a rift in time. Fitz uses gravitonium found on the ship to create a device to close the rift. However, Coulson reveals that he is dying, so he offers to risk his life to deliver the device into the tear. It's a risk I'll have to take. He lives, closes the rift, and Simmons and Fitz finally get married. Yay! Stranger yet, Deke realizes from their rings and wedding vows that Fitz and Simmons are actually his grandparents. But no time for sentiment. The rift begins to reopen and sends in all the team's worst baddies at them one by one. The search continues for more gravitonium to close it. But it seems Hale has similar plans. While making a grab for the same gravitonium, Colson agrees to accompany Hale back to her base. Her daughter Ruby is super obsessed with Daisy and begins working with a revived and enhanced Werner Von Strucker to become the destroyer of worlds herself. But her mother doesn't trust her or a mysterious gravitonium infusion machine to get her there. Former foe Crusher Creel turns on Hydra to help Coulson and his old friend General Talbot to escape. Ruby gets her wish for a gravitonium tune-up, but she can't handle the intensity. The souped-up Ruby kills Werner, overcome with gravitonium, and Yo-Yo kills her, but hey, you gotta hand it to her. She got what was coming to her. Coulson helps Talbot escape, but old Grumpy Mustache ultimately succumbs to Hydra programming and ends up betraying S.H.I.E.L.D. He volunteers to absorb the rest of the gravitonium, which turns him into a super-powered jerk. Besides his father, having joined forces with the alien Remorath, convinces Talbot to seek out more gravitonium for more power, and it works! Talbot begins tearing apart the Earth. It turns out maybe he is the destroyer of worlds. The agents try to save Chicago and Fitz is mortally wounded in the fray. No! Daisy uses the very last dose of centipede serum to knock Talbot into space and change the future once and for all. However, this means Coulson has a finite number of days because the serum was his last hope for survival. With the team momentarily at peace and with Fitz resting in peace, Coulson and Agent May take one final vacation, this time to actual Tahiti. But who will lead our agents? Mac gets an epic promotion to become the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. All right, Director, we're to first. And they've got their work cut out for him because Simmons vows to find the fits of her timeline who is still alive but locked in stasis somewhere in space because, you know, that future was changed and he really shouldn't stay asleep waiting for a future without Simmons. And there we have it. Will Simmons find her fits? Will Max be able to fill Coulson's shoes? And who the heck is this guy who looks so much like Coulson if Coulson is dead? Well, we'll just have to watch the season six premiere of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. May 10th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central on ABC. And of course, go catch up on all episodes of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. now streaming. Who cares? Wow, mm -hmm. that was a lot. It was. Who uh, would have saw it coming? Me. General Talbot, Destroyer of Worlds, I Super Jerk. <laughs> I like just a huge And now you got Deke uh, is on the scene working with the team. Oh, always, so nice. I always love new teammates. Yeah, I love that. I love that he hasn't had a planet before, so he's just <laughs> enjoying trees and burgers and friendships. So many nice. things to enjoy for the first time. Hey, I'm dying to know what happens to Fitz and Simmons. I feel like that's always the dying. question. What's happened? What? Dying to know. Oh, oh you. Too ooh. soon. Uh, Fitz and Simmons belong together. That's they all do. that I know. Their names even match. Oh, of uh, but anyways, we have lots more to talk about today because we also have more info about Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout on Disney XD. That's right. Last week we showed you a bunch of the cool new animation styles featured in the Black Vortex story arc. Yeah, and this week we have a very special look at the new animation styles featured in Disney XD's new episodes. Hey, just don't get sucked in. <gasps> okay, look, there's got to be some explanation for this. Warning. Ship is on collision course with unidentified sun. In the second batch of the Black Vortex episodes, Quill finds himself uh, in kind of a three-dimensional world, uh, what we would call a, a, a clay animation looking kind of world where he's, uh, it, he's still in the cockpit of the Milano, but he is made of clay and he's heading toward a very hot sun and he's starting to melt. The Star-Lord concept from the very beginning was, wouldn't it be fun if Star-Lord was stuck in the cockpit of the ship and suddenly realized that he was, he was coming apart? So we kicked around a few ideas of, well, how would he melt? What if we made him plastic or clay? 
and then we talked about a claymation style. Starlord was particularly good in claymation because we felt like he would be a character that would get in on the joke a little bit more. So the fact that he could bend and stretch and was suddenly sort of more three-dimensional and paunchy was something that he would sort of be able to roll along with more than any other character. That then opened up excitement for design, but also a challenge for production because traditional stop motion with actual puppets is very time consuming and very expensive. So we thought we could accurately simulate a uh, claymation look by using CG. So that was our challenge. We weren't completely sure we could do it, but we thought we'd give it a good shot. We already had the design of the Milano, so it was easy enough for us to construct it in a 3D form. And then the character of Quill, we decided to, again, cartoonize. So we took him from his realistic looking design from the series, and we turned him into basically a Rankin and Bass inspired version of Peter Quill. The restrictions we put on the writing was that it had, the entire story had to take place in the cockpit of the ship because we could only afford to build one environment. We could only get so many minutes of that style of animation. But the nice thing is that that allowed for the, uh, for the Rocket and, and Drax, you know, heavily cartoony episode to, uh, to run a little longer and, and really get to, to play out a lot of those sort of classic cartoon gags. Ah, oh, so you finally decided to do your job. I suddenly feel very light on my feet. Fine friend you turned out to be. In the uh, Tex Avery influenced version of Rocket, it's traditional 2D, very manic, and, and that was very intentional. We had a lot of fun with that one because it allowed us to do uh, a lot of squash and stretch and a lot of exaggeration. Very classic animation, uh, 2D style from the 1930s and 40s. So his design got very wacky and certainly a lot more fun. The thing that I'm most proud of our show is that we really keep the Guardians like themselves. And we really try to give you that heart and those kind of complicated, messy relationships um, while still having fun. And I feel like this was an extra special segment where we really got to stretch ourselves. I feel like this is our really chance to show you the best of what we can do when we're sort of totally let loose and the best of what these characters can do when they're totally let loose. And so I really hope that you enjoy it. Oh man, they must be like a kid in a candy shop. All of those animation styles are so cool. I'm a fan of claymation. I'm a fan of a good melted quill. Nice uh, Joey <laughs> melted nope, quill. Nope. I, I do <laughs> have to say, I just love that they got to do so many different things. If you didn't watch last week's episode, go back and look at those mm. two because you've never really seen animation like this in oh, Marvel. No, universe. no, no, no. Uh, they go to an 8 bit land, looks like an early arcade game as a child of the 80s. Yeah. That is amazing. The yes, please. The coolest. <laughs> yeah, check out new episodes of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout on. Disney XD. Yes, now the character design is so cool in all these different animation styles. There's even an old timey rocket raccoon in one of the episodes that I really, really love. I like old timey oh. versions of characters. Oh yeah, oh I actually learned how to draw a rocket raccoon. Uh, not that I need help because I'm a master artist, but I took some pointers from Marvel Animation's own Eric Radomski anyway. Ooh, let's watch and learn. I'm here with Eric Radomski from Marvel Animation and I need art lessons, so here I am. Rocket Raccoon has taken shape in many interesting ways during the Black Vortex for Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. And I would like to learn this particular style. Well, this style allows for a little bit more uh, interpretation because it is it is a little more abstract and uh, wonky. That is my style. There you go. <laughs> um, it's always good to start with the head and it's a, it's a small oval. So because he's got a slight curve to them, we'll start here and just sort of give ourselves a little bit of a guide. So it's just sort of a swoop. We want to give a shoulder line and then we also want to give a hip location. So these are the sort of basic wireframes of where we're going to start building this character from. How do we finish this with the magic of time lapse? Time lapse. So we've got the basic body down. We'll add his tail in here because it's a big bulky raccoon tail. <laughs> Mine look like a talk bubble. <laughs> and then we're going to get into the shapes to, to help define the perspective. Please. We're going to add <laughs> we're going to add stripes to the tail so they follow the contour of the tail, the shape of the tail. And then we'll fill them in just to distinguish the dark side of the tail 
from the lights so it looks like a raccoon tail. I'm good at this part, just filling it in like a coloring book. Yeah, and then uh, we're gonna get into a little bit more dimension of the face. Shall we reveal these beautiful artworks? Do you have any job openings? <laughs> Rocket's gonna eat a little more protein. <laughs> His tail, though, is working that, overtime. That's that's quite a tail. If you want to see quite a tail, be sure to watch Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, The Black Vortex on Disney XD. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Art. Don't you going to try to define it? Because that wasn't, if you look up you, art, that ain't going to be in the dictionary. You can't <laughs> define art. It's an expression of me, and my I, expression has poor line work. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a very, a, a, a raccoon. I don't know if it was Rocket, though. It was something, <laughs> and, and you can't question that. Uh, no, I cannot. Uh, no, listen, uh, you can't question uh, checking out new episodes of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout on Disney XD. Yeah, and let's get ready for Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Tell us how you're feeling about Fitz with hashtag Earth's Mightiest Show. Oh, Fitz feels, it's back. <laughs> I know. Hey, don't miss the season premiere tomorrow night on ABC. We will see you next time. I'm Lorraine. And I'm Langston. And this is Marvel. Your universe. Art. So what were you trying to do? I don't know. Thanks for watching Earth's Mightiest Show. If you like this, like this. Leave us a comment and subscribe to the Marvel channel. Or click the box over there to watch our last episode. So how are your fits feels? Fits feels feel a bit on the fritz. Oh boy.